And welcome to another live WDCB broadcast from the Piano Forte Studios, 1335 South Michigan Avenue in Chicago. I'm Barry Winograd, and Blues Fest Week, it's here. It's in Chicago, and we have some great music today to get you in the spirit of the event. My guest here at Piano Forte in Chicago is blues piano master Barrel House Chuck. He learned his craft from Chicago blues piano legends like Sunnyland Slim and Little Brother Montgomery, and today he's one of the foremost practitioners of the craft. He'll also be performing this Sunday afternoon as part of the Chicago Delta Blues Band at the Chicago Blues Festival in Grand Park. We'll get to the music in just a moment, but first I'd like to mention that today is a very special day here at WDCB. We're beginning a new partnership with CAN TV, Chicago's public access television network. Beginning today, you'll be able to listen to WDCB's programming 24 hours a day, seven days a week on CAN TV 42 in Chicago as part of CAN TV's interactive bulletin board service. Not only that, but you can tune in to CAN TV 27 right now and watch this live interview and performance from Piano Forte as it happens. So welcome again to our live broadcast and Barrel House Chuck, welcome to the airways of WDCB. Thank you. Thank you very much, Barry. Well, it's great to have you here, Barrel House, and I know it's going to be another great jazz, uh, blues festival this uh, weekend, and you're a part of that. But uh, before we talk about you coming from Columbus, Ohio, to Chicago and everything else, Barrel House Chuck, should we, you've got to share with us, what is a Barrel House, or what was a Barrel House? Well, real brother Montgomery told me back in his day when he was in Kentwood, Louisiana, there were places that the piano players on their way to New Orleans would stop to make a couple extra dollars before they hit New Orleans. And his father had a barrel house. And actually, as a six-year-old little brother Montgomery used to sneak out of his <laughs> bedroom window in the middle of the night and crawl underneath the barrel house and listen to Jelly Roll Morton. Not bad. And um, there were places where there was whiskey, women, and gambling, and people uh, from the turpentine camps and the logging camps. And uh, there were the prohibition. There was places that you could get a drink and have a good time. And there was always a piano player, a big upright piano, and people would be playing. But his brother said around 6 o'clock in the evening until 7 the next day, in the next morning, oh, sure. nonstop. So. And another reason, of course, is the barrels of beer that were up in the walls, so yeah. all the walls were made up literally of barrels of beer, empty and full. Oh yes. Oh yes. Petey yes, Weestraw had some cool little songs about that, uh, about beer and everything else. But yeah, it's always been part of uh, the music and Barrel House piano. And mm -hmm. uh, myself, um, the name came from uh, a song that Leroy Carr wrote, Barrel House Woman. Ah. Um, this is the first song that I learned to play on the piano, and my good friend who's no longer with us, little Joe Burson, great harmonica player that played from uh, in Chicago in the 70s. He died in uh, April 2nd, 1989. He was in the Jimmy Rogers band. He was a disciple mm -hmm. and a protege of Big Walter Horton, but he started calling me Barrel House Chuck, and it just <laughs> stuck. Uh, yeah, yeah, we just ended up... Yeah. To keep my name, so uh, that's where that came from. So now, was that in Columbus, Ohio, or after you came to Chicago, or in between? That was in between, in Gainesville, Florida, actually. Right. And Barry, I went to Gainesville uh, in uh, 1970, actually, mm -hmm. and uh, that's where uh, I was playing with Bo Diddley, um, and met a guy, Robert Hunter, that played sure. saxophone, a great tenor saxophone and singer. Mm -hmm. uh, we used to play... Uh, all over. We opened up for B.B. King and Orlando and uh, Bo Diddley lived about 20 miles from my house and I just went and found his house and knocked on his door and I asked if he was there and he came and said, what you doing? And I brought my records and he started to, we started to hang out and play and he was very nice to me, come down to my gigs and watch me play. And uh, he said, you got that chest sound. So <laughs> that was back in 78. And he's talking about chest records sound yeah, here in yeah, Chicago. Yeah, right down the street. Yeah, well, Bo Diddley, he was uh, a great teacher, a great man to run into. To uh, He was a very nice guy. Yeah. He really was. He yeah. was straight up. Well, why don't we listen to uh, some Barrel House from Barrel House Chuck here. You said you were going to do Barrel House Woman? Yeah, that's one of my favorites. All right. It's Barrel House. Thank you. Oh, great Leroy Carr wrote this. All right. Leroy Fingers Carr. It's Barrel House Chuck, WDCB, DCB Jazz.
of a voice today. I'm, I'm sorry about that. I'll do the best I can. I would like to do a song that's off a CD that I just put out on the Sirens record label by the great Floyd Jones, who played in Chicago at the, back in the 1950s. He was at the Maxwell Street playing all over Chicago. And uh, this is a little song called Stockyard Blues. I hope you like it. This morning, boys, just about half past nine. I passed the stockyard and the boys were still on the old picket line. You know, I need to earn a dollar. You know, I need to earn a dollar.
to make a dollar. You know, I need to make a dollar. Cost of living is going to go high till I don't know what to do. That's Barrel House Chuck. You're listening to WDCB 90.9 FM, DCB Jazz. I'm Barry Winograd. And Barrel House Chuck, you're uh, part of the Jazz Fest, uh, excuse me, Blues Fest. Got to remember where we're at. This Sunday from 3 till 4 in the afternoon, the front porch stage, right? Chicago Delta Blues Band. Uh, actually, twice I'll be uh, so, oh, excellent. Uh, Saturday with Billy Flynn, my great friend, uh, plays guitar and one of the best, actually. And my other great friend is a great drummer, uh, Kenny Smith, and uh, Bob Stroger, and a host of others will be there. So, at what time on uh, Saturday? Uh, I believe it's five o'clock. Okay. The front porch stage as well. Yes. All right. Billy excellent. Yeah. Well, you've had a chance to. Uh, study to be mentored by some of the biggest, best, and uh, brightest on the blues scene, and two of those gentlemen being little brother Montgomery and Sonny Land Slim, and I was hoping you'd uh, talk a little bit how they uh, brought you under their wing and uh, helped you out a little bit. Well, Sonny Land and little brother met each other in 1921 uh, in around Vicksburg, Mississippi, so... Mm -hmm. Uh, it was a lot of fun when uh, every Friday Sunnyland would come over to Little Brother's house and I'd be over there and he lived at 21, he lived at 25, was it 21, 25 Mich uh, on uh, in Hyde Park. Uh, okay, lived sorry. Hyde Park. Yeah, he lived at Hyde Park. <laughs> I was trying to rattle off his address. Uh, and he'd come over and bring him fish, so it'd just be piano players. It'd be mm -hmm. myself and, and Little Brother and Sunnyland. And uh, they would talk about when they met each other, and and uh, and then they would go into the stories of uh, what it was like to be uh, in in that era from the 20s, and piano players like Leroy Carr and you know Robert Johnson, the guitarist, uh, everybody that uh, you can imagine. And little brother comes more from a jazz background, so he had uh, piano wars with Jelly Roll Martin and Fast Waller, and and he knew W. C. Handy, and of course he knew James P. Johnson, the father. Stride, and then you had the Sonny Lance Lim who fell off a milk truck catching a ride where Robert Johnson was playing <laughs> in the same town. And uh, you know, they both knew Leroy Carr and Scrapper yeah. Blackwell, and of course, Jimmy Yancey and Pine Top Smith, all the great piano players. And I'd like to throw in real quick I just played for a benefit to race money for a headstone for Pine Top Smith. Oh. Uh, I drove 500 miles and went out and, uh, and crippled Clarence Lofton as well. Uh, so that was nice because neither of them have a headstone. Uh, but both of the piano players, they, they were very different, of course, in their style. And of course, Sunnyland had this great big voice so you could holler and and uh, break glass almost. You could hear him uh, miles around without a mic back in the Delta. And they just, I think they just took a liking to me because I, you know, I was really sincere that I liked the music and I, I loved both of them dearly. And they knew that I, I took care of both of them and, you know, whatever I could do. I, I lived with brother the last couple of years of his life and not with him 100% living with him, but I was over there every other day and sometimes I'd stay with him for days on end. And, uh, and Sonny would same thing when he got sick. Of course, uh, you know I'd go see him in the hospital, and, and a lot of these guys like S. P. Leary and uh, other musicians from that day that I was hanging out with. That as they got older, all of a sudden time caught up with them. They seemed to stay the same age for a long time, you know, mm -hmm. like the mighty oak of the forest. And then all of a sudden they just kind of fell apart. And when they did fall apart, it was pretty. A sad thing to, to witness to see them go from, you know, to, at the end of their lives and then be with them and, uh, you know, and then say goodbye. Yeah, it's very something that still haunts me to this day is, you know, I, the voice when I hear their records. Uh, but you're a gentleman, an individual, a musician who's able to keep that vibrancy, that love, that life continuing on and passing it on to the next generation. 
and that's very important. Yes. Is there one particular pianist that you base your style on? Uh, well, uh, there's two really um, Sunny Land and Pine Top Perkins that mm -hmm. uh, really yeah, I got a lot of my style from because I was around both of them. I'd follow Muddy Waters around and mm -hmm. down in Florida. And he'd be playing in Gainesville and Tampa and Orlando, and then he'd go to Tallahassee, and then he'd go to Atlanta. And uh, after so long, they started to recognize me, and I'd just wait in the van <laughs> in, the, in the parking lot and wait for the, the van with the Illinois plates to show up. And then <laughs> Muddy, I mean, it was like it was like seeing the Beatles there, you know, or, oh, or sure. you know, some huge band, uh, you know, the, whoever, you know. I mean, there's Muddy Waters. I mean, to me, he was every bit as uh, the, he was a great guy. He walked me to my car after the gig and thanked me for coming down and seeing him. And you know, and he, he said, "Well, go get some breakfast." And I go out to eat with him and Pine Top. And so after so long, he just come on, come on. I'd just walk in with him and be in the backstage with the band, and then the band would go open up, and I'd just be sitting there like I'm with you with Muddy. And mm. He was very nice. And I have to tell you this quick story. Sunnyland told me the big fun part of the story and I send this out to Glenn, Glenn Moss, my buddy out there. Uh, Sonny Lance says, you know, I'm the one that got muddy off the truck. <laughs> I said, I said, what do you mean, man? He goes, well, he says, Muddy was delivering Felician blinds, <laughs> and he wouldn't get off the truck. He didn't want to quit his day job to play music. So Sonny Lance told Muddy, he said, partner, your mother's dead. She died today. You got to come with me. I'm going to take you there. <laughs> so Muddy got off the truck, and meanwhile, my old girlfriend's mother owned Aristocrat Records. Her name was Evelyn, and Sunnyland recorded it at Aristocrat. And Evelyn asked Sunnyland, "Do you know a guitar player and a guitar player that can sing?" And Sunnyland Slim said, "Do I ever? Mm -hmm. I know this young guy named Muddy Waters." And she said, "Can he sing?" And Evelyn and Sunnyland said, "My partner can sing like a bird." <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I guess Muddy thought he was going to a funeral home and said. Sunnyland took him to Aristocrat Records, which was pre-Chess Records, <laughs> and they did their first session. Now, the other part of the story is when I met Muddy much later, well, not too much later, actually, the next time I met Muddy after meeting Sunnyland in 79, I met Muddy before Sunnyland, I said, I'm a friend of Sunnyland Slim's. He goes, Sunnyland got me off the truck. <laughs> <laughs> And then <laughs> Sunnyland say, I got money off the truck. They, but I mean, it was back and forth. They got, one got me off the truck. It was over and over. So it was kind of fun to hear that. Good friends. Having yeah. some fun. Yeah. yeah and then uh, with, when, uh, you know, when these piano players would walk in, people like Little Brother or Howlin' Wolf would be playing. They would say, ladies and gentlemen, the world's greatest blues piano player just walked in the room. Little Brother Montgomery, or if it was Sonny Lance Slim, they were like the ambassadors of all those, you know, piano players. I mean, there was great ones back there. And uh, the Science Records, I'd like to say who I record for, has captured a lot of that. And uh, the first release was um, back in 1970. And uh, had Blind John Davis, Willie Mabon, Sonny Lance Slim, and uh, Irwin Helfer. And... Uh, there's since uh, the beginning of the label, Stephen Dolans has recorded Pine Top Perkins and Detroit Jr. Uh, and myself, and along with many other jazz and B3 players in Chicago. So uh, that first album was called Heavy Timber, and that's where the Sirens record started. Uh, and then later on, we did 88. And, uh, 80, eight hands on 88 keys is called, and that was a great, fun time in the studio with Pine Top Perkins and Detroit Junior, Irwin Helfer, and yours truly. So that was uh, that's uh, 
where all these guys fall into place because there was uh, they were so accessible you could go and see blind john davis one night and see sunny land or if pine top was in town not playing with muddy he would come by the blues and big moose was around and of course detroit jr who i followed around he lived with me for a while and i i just took little bits from all of them it was living history living oh, they history were, they history. all and and and, yeah. and, the, and the little brother you know, Blind John Davis called little brother Liberace. <laughs> you know, and then, and then brother would say, well, Sunnyland good at the two or three songs he can play. And then Sunnyland would say, well, brother, you can't sing. And they all would tell me all the stuff behind the backs, you know. <laughs> well, why don't we hear some more from a man who does play and sing quite well. We've got a new recording, Drifting from Town to Town. Can we get another couple off of that? Yeah, and I apologize for my voice today. I'm oh, totally it sounds good. That's, that's fine, don't worry. <laughs> All right, B Barrel House Chuck. It's DCB and DCB Jazz. Orlando, can I have a little bit of mic, please, so I can hear myself? One, two. One, two. Well, I'll do the best I can here. This is a song off my new CD. It's uh, called You Can't Live Long. It's by the great Floyd Jones again. Smith, I'd like to do. This is the first boogie woogie ever made back in Chicago in 1920, 28 or 29 on the Vocalion label Pine Tops Boogie. I'll just do a little bit of it. <laughs>
Miles Chuck. It's WDCB, 90.9 FM, WDCB.org. I'm Barry Winograd. Barrel House Chuck is here with us. And we're uh, getting ready for Chicago Blues Fest. My years is 2014. Yes, indeed. And uh, Barrel House, you're going to be... Uh, there again on Saturday afternoon at 5 with the uh, Kenny Smith Blues Band. That's on Sunday. Oh, I'll that's be, on Sunday. Yeah, Sunday. Okay. And I'll be Saturday, we'll be performing with Billy Flynn. Oh, Billy Flynn. Okay. Yes. All right. So you can catch him out there. I wanted to get one more question in before we uh, let you go. And that is do you find, now you're the uh, elder generation of this style of presentation, are there younger folks coming up who are also uh, digging in and still have that uh, tradition? Traditional feel that you present. I, I think there's always people coming up that are interested in it. Um, uh, people, uh, mo a lot of boogie woogie players. Um, mm -hmm. uh, not as many Chicago blues piano players. My great friend, who I got to say, Erwin Helfer, who's just one of my very dearest friends, who's on the Sirens label. He. Um, He's one of the guys that hung out with uh, Mommy Yancey and he hung out with Speckle Red and he hung out with Cripple Clarence Lofton and as a young boy his daddy would take him to see Little Brother and Sunnyland and Blind John and so he got that uh, first hand experience like I did because he's 77 and I'm 39. <laughs> yeah. I thought so, you were 38. <laughs> 38. Uh, we met at the Cornell Lounge. Uh, we had such a fun time and Stephen really brought us Stephen Dolan's uh, brought us together again mm -hmm. by the Sirens label. Um, he has such an incredibly cool style of uh, Jimmy Yancey, and he, you know he likes Damien Monk. He plays the best of Duke Ellington. He'll do in a sentimental mood, but he's like a real giver to to people. Like this. he's a teacher, and he really gives all of his styles and his lessons to the whole world and he has his own studio in his house mm -hmm. so he has a street named after him and that's the name of his new cd is called Irwin helfer way and <laughs> he is such a great i love him he's so funny too he doesn't even mean to be funny but he, he, he he'll crack you up his cd is called i'm i'm not hungry but i like to eat <laughs> blues and he, he will literally ask you, hey, are you going to finish that? And, he, you know, he, he'll take you out to the Chinese restaurants and stuff. And But uh, he's a, uh, I want to also state on Wednesdays, I'll be performing at Barrel House Flat. It's on Lincoln Avenue, and Irwin's going to join me, and that's going to start up next Wednesday. It'll be upstairs. There's no cover charge. Okay. So uh, all you piano lovers, come by and, and see that's Barrel, Barrel House, House Flat. Yeah, Barrel House Flat on Lincoln Avenue. It's you, it's the old deja vu where it used to oh, be, okay. and, and uh, it's so that's a, a, no uh, cover charge. Sheffield. Yeah, right Lincoln by Sheffield, Sheffield. exactly, yeah. and uh, right where Howlin' Wolf used to play it live at Alice's is right around the corner. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do a song called Big House that was recorded at that place. Uh, yeah, it's just yeah, Chicago's got so many memories. You know, Barry, you go down and you run into a, a particular spot where somebody used to perform, and I used to get in the car and I'd take Sonny Lance Slim out and Hubert Sumlin out to Chess Records right down the street. We'd sit in front of Chess Records listening to Howlin' Wolf in the car drinking whiskey and at four in the morning and <laughs> listening to the Howlin' Wolf and, and I took Brother to the Furniture Mart and where he recorded the Vicksburg Blues in 1929 and he'd say, ah, man, the Furniture Mart, you'd go up the stairs and he said, you'd see uh, some of them time breakers, they'd be falling out, they'd, they'd fall out drunk and I'd have to step over them and he's I said well who would that be and he said oh you know some of them crippled Clarence Lofton and and he said uh, you know Sonny Boy and you know so yeah, it was fun you're sitting there and taking these guys back to where the history was made and you know and listen and listening to the record you know, CD in the car mm -hmm. yeah and I, I've done that my whole life I, I go back to the past uh, I kind of live in the past uh, sometimes it's well, so that the past is a very important part of the future and I think you are well I, I, I live in the past that tradition. <laughs> yes and I back to your question um, Barry uh, there, there yeah there's a there's a few people around you know in Chicago mm -hmm. Ario and Johnny Laguana you know there's a few people out there and my friend Irwin has students 
Aaron, there's a lot of students out there and people, and I'm going to get in trouble here for not mentioning everybody, <laughs> uh, but um, there's a few people that are continuing the tradition of piano, so it's always the guitar and harmonica, so that's what's nice about the pianoforte is the piano's king. We used to be king before the guitar was amplified. Well, everybody used to have a piano in their own apartment or house, too. Yeah, you go in there and you could play, and we used yeah. to drown the guitar out with the big upright, you know, with the big... Uh, piano and now it's you well, know that was before electricity though, yeah right? <laughs> yeah you know but it's funny you, you you take the piano out of all those records man it's just another record okay That's true. the great thing about those records were the piano you listen to chuck berry johnny johnson you listen to otis span with muddy waters jose jose lee kennard you know, if you listen to Sonny Boy Williamson, Blind John Davis, or Big Maceo and Tampa Red, the piano was the glue. And, you know, without the piano, they're just, you know, another boring CD of two guitars and harmonica. Stick the piano in there, okay? That's, you hear me out there? <laughs> <laughs> Barrel House Chuck, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right. Uh, once again, this is WDCV, and Chuck's going to be at the Jazz, uh, the Blues Fest. I'll get it right one of these days. Hey, I'll play both. Uh, well, well, you do. I heard you playing some nice jazz before we went on the air. Uh, Saturday afternoon again. Uh, you'll be there at 5 o'clock? Yeah, you know what? I, I don't even know. I have to look. So okay. Just look for Billy Flynn, and I'll show up. Okay. All right. And then it's Sunday again and at with 3. The, yeah, and that's with Kenny B.D.I. Smith. Uh, he's a great kid to play, and his daddy was. Uh, Willie Big Eye Smith, and uh, I, of course, knew his father back in the early 70s, so, and recorded his last CD. It was great. Uh, mm -hmm. Born in Arkansas. And right, well, Willie's on my CD, Got My Eyes on You, and I got to give that a plug if I could. Well, That's, Kim Wilson's on my CDs, and he's the greatest harmonica player on the planet, I'll tell you. And, hmm. and there's a lot of great ones, but he is definitely up on the, one of the very best, and uh, he's singing on my new CD. And of course, at Blues Fest, you'll be able to find all those fine recordings at the appropriate place. Okay, uh, Barrel House Chuck, I want to thank you for being with us. Can we get uh, two more quickies from you? Yeah. And then we're going to head on back to uh, WDCB. But uh, Barrel House Chuck, ladies and thank gentlemen. Thank you, Barry, and thank you. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan, for uh, calling me up. Uh, Dan Bender, thank you for having me. And uh, thanks, Stephen Dolans and Glenn Moss and everybody out there. And, and thank you. And thank you, fun. man. This is thanks, uh, a gas. This is wonderful. All right. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Barrel House Chuck.
nothing you like. Don't care how great you are. Don't care what you were. When it all ends up, we got to go back to my. some Leroy Carr for you. That's me. You may own diamonds or pearls. You can own an airplane, darling. Now you know and fly all over this big old world. Don't care how great you are. Don't care what you were. When it all ends up, got to go. Chuck. Excellent. Hey, thanks for listening to our live broadcast with Barrel House Chuck from the Piano Forte Studios in Chicago. Barrel House Chuck will be performing this Saturday afternoon with the Chicago Delta Blues Band and this Sunday afternoon with Billy Flynn, both on the front porch stage at the Chicago Blues Festival in Grand Park. Thanks again to Barbara, Michael, and the entire staff of Chicago's Can TV for providing the live televised broadcast of our event today. And don't forget, Chicago residents, you can now listen to WDCB's programming 24 hours a day, seven days a week on Can TV 42 in Chicago as part of Can TV's interactive bulletin board service. Find out more about Can TV at CanTV.org. Thanks also to Thomas Zoles and Victor Lejeune from the Piano Forte Foundation. You can find out more about Piano Forte online at PianoFortefoundation.org. Thanks also to Bill Tennant, Paula Bella, Clarice Cabora. Ken Scott and Dan Binder at WDCB for production assistance. And thanks again, of course, to Barrel House Chuck. Thank you. You can applaud. Yes, thanks again to Barrel House Chuck for joining us this afternoon. Now stay tuned here at WDCB as DCB Jazz continues with Paula Bella and Leslie Karos, and they'll be bringing you great jazz all afternoon long here on WDCB. I'm Barry Winograd. Have a great Thursday and a fantastic Blues Fest. Thank you all.